We got here. about we 12 minutes. We won't be here that long. How long will we be here? Well, We're almost finished. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're here today with Jim and Christy Gallagher. Uh, Jim has been the founding pastor at Vero Beach for the last 23 years. And you guys came down this weekend just to be with us and Jim, you, you to teach. And so we thought we'd spend some time together just talking a little bit about ministry. Because yeah. you're a couple who've been in ministry and Lynn and I have been here for, what, 38 years. Mm -hmm. and wow. So uh, a lot, lot happens yeah. in those amounts of time. Jim, you taught a message today on fight the good fight. Mm. So I was going to say, have you guys ever? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we've never we've fought. Never fought no, right? no, no, no. no. Okay. Well, you know, the, I gave you the message title, Fight Right. Yes. And, and it was very ambiguous. I was going to come talk about marriage, but okay. All right. I decided But your wife was with you. <laughs> yeah. So you That's at the men's retreat. <laughs> That's the men's retreat. So, so in that, though, but in that title, Fight the Good Fight, some great points about mm -hmm you know, the kingdom and all that it's meant to be. What, what are some of the things you think of? Maybe, Lynn, you can chime in with this as well. Of some of the spiritual fights that go on in planting a church mm -hmm. that both of you, I'm sure, have been impacted by mm -hmm. for the many years you've been there. What are some things that come to your mind? You know, I think, I mean, um, I, I don't know if I can say these things are commonplace mm -hmm. um, as much as I can say these are our experiences. Sure. Right. And maybe that's, you know, maybe that'll um, resonate with with somebody. But I think um, one of the, the fortunate things for us is we really didn't have any idea what we were getting into. Right. right. Um, and I, you know, I don't mean that simply tongue in cheek. I just mean there was kind of a sense that that the Lord was calling us like we felt like it was very clear God wanted us to move to Vero Beach and um, we had a good pattern of ministry um, growing up Christy actually growing up at Calvary Costa Mesa I got saved through an outreach that they did and then right. really learned how to follow the Lord um, and learn to serve there um, but we kind of just it was that step into okay this is what God's called us to do we're gonna come and we're gonna we're gonna teach the Bible and we're going to love the people and we're going to look for ways to bring the gospel into the community. Yeah. And uh, but I think just that that in itself brought up all kinds of challenges. Right. Of really, we weren't sure what we were doing. So, so what were some <clears throat> of the challenges, say, for, for you, Christy, as a pastor's wife stepping into this role? I guess. You were a youth pastor or something? Yeah. A Bible Bi teacher, Bible which teacher. is much different. Much different. Right. Yeah. And when we got, I don't know at what point, but very early on, I said to Jim, I don't even know what it is to be a pastor's wife. <laughs> <laughs> There's no book out there. Yeah. And he, well, there probably was. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't and I was under K, but it was such a huge church. I never had an interaction with K. And so mm -hmm. one of the things that he said to me, it's just like, it's just being a Christian. Right. It's loving Jesus and loving right. people and serving him. And you've been doing that. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I, I think I can handle this. Oh, that's awesome. You know, Keep it simple. Pro probably like you guys, we, we didn't have much of an understanding. No. We planted a church. I had been an assistant pastor and um, in my hometown. So that comes with another whole yeah. dynamic. Yeah. And uh, Lynn's mother, when we first got engaged oh, yeah. and we met in Bible college, told her, Lynn, I, you don't even play the piano. Yeah. <laughs> so you, I said, I know, Mom, but isn't he cute? <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't have Absolutely. much. Yeah. yeah, we, we used, were young. Yeah, we were young. Yeah, we were young. Right. I think that was actually to our advantage. Yeah. yeah. We had no expectations. I never really yeah. knew what a pastor's wife was like either. I didn't grow up in the church. Right. So um, I was just myself, and that was probably the best thing to be. Yeah. Um, we didn't know that our kids were pastor kids till yeah. kids told them that they were PKs or they didn't yeah. know what yeah. that was. So that's I was just talking to Nate the other day about when he was ten years old. He came from church home from church and he said, "Mom, what's a PK?" Right. And he said, "The lady at church told me Call I me. needed to be better because I was a PK." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh no, Ooh, those are fighting you're just words. gonna walk with Jesus. That's, that's all. Right. We're all called yeah. on equal that's ground right. to walk with Jesus. Right. Absolutely." Yeah. Yeah. That, that yeah. similar thing happened to our kids. Mm -hmm. They were going yeah. to Christian school, and they came home and said, "The what's kids there PK? tell us we're PKs." Mm -hmm. And I yeah. said, 
I didn't really know what it was at first, and I thought, oh, I think it means preacher's kid or pastor's yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so you've been there 23 years. Yeah. Uh, you planted the church. Uh, what would you say right now, and maybe both of you could address this, what's, what's going on right now at Vero Beach that you guys are excited about? I think, um, <clears throat> I think maybe, uh, you know, this, the, the, the whole world shook up. Right. And, and things changed. And I think in, in all of us, or at least the people that I've been in communication with, there's this sense of, I just want life to go back to normal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, this is no prophetic statement or anything, but I'm not sure what normal is going to actually look like. And I think that, you know, we've lived um, for my whole Christian experience and much longer than that in the Western world. We've lived with an expression of church that has worked very, very well in our climate. Mm. And so, you know, I mean, we've been in Germany together right. and it works really well in Germany. <laughs> yeah. And I've been in, you know, in the African continent and in <laughs> South America and and that it works really good. Um, but it's an expression of the church. It, it's not an expression uh, that, uh, I, what I'm trying to say is that ministry is not limited to the expression of how church has looked what it has all this look time. Like. And right. so, so this, you know, when the whole world shut down and suddenly we went to being video churches for some period of yeah. time and, and we, had to, we had to sort of narrow it down to Adapt. what is the church mm. and how do we be that in this environment? So I think what I'm excited about is, is how we figure out how to be most effective in yeah. the season that we're currently in, where we have, you know, there, there are a considerable number of people who are back to relatively normal life. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll come into the church building, they'll interact. There are other people with various levels of uh, hesitancy. hesitancy. Yeah. And how are we best reaching them? How are we going to reach people and who respecting that right. exact, but also just people who are comfortable with a trip in and out of the grocery store because it's relatively quick, but they're not comfortable in a gathering of people. Mm -hmm. How do we win them to Christ right. if, if the only way of winning them to Christ is is the gathering of people? And so just kind of considering, like, how do we express ourselves in this right. climate? What does that look like for Vero Beach, Florida and for Calvary? In Vero Beach, Florida. That's that's a great con uh, response because I think, you know, we we're in this like you said model where oh you come to church and you get saved. Yeah. Well, now we're in this thing where I mean we actually got to go into the world and <laughs> preach the gospel. <laughs> exactly. And that's our original call anyway, right? Right. But and and I got saved at an outreach event. Right. right. And Outside you know the church walls. Right. And and um, uh, I think we were having a conversation about I reflected on this recently, but. Um, in, in all the years of being at the, I worked at Calvary Costa Mesa for nine years. I went to church there for 12. Yeah. I went to numerous conferences that Pastor Chuck spoke at. In my uh, um, memory, I, I think I only asked Chuck advice one time. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. one time, Chuck, what do you think I should do? And we were at a conference. We were maybe a year into pastoring the church. And I, I said, Chuck, um, you know, you've always taught us to, to make the people that we're ministering to the most loved and the best taught people. I said, but I got saved at an outreach that you did. Like you weren't just focused on the people within the four mm -hmm. walls. And I said, at what point do we start going outside those walls yeah. into the community? And Chuck said, God will tell you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, oh no, okay. <laughs> you mean I can do whatever I think the Lord tells me to do? <laughs> okay, you know, yeah. so. So, you know, but it's like, you know, we had an Easter event that's outdoor in the community. We had a lot of people come, but how do we, if we can't, like, we can't bring in people into the door, we can't gather the right. same way outside the building. Right. How, we, how do we be more effective? Yeah, and, and so the Lord will tell you. The Lord will tell you. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so here's, a, here's a question for the, maybe the four of us. Okay. Um, one thing we definitely hold in common other than just planting a church is raising our children in the church. And I, and I think that's important to a lot of young people with kids who, how do you bring your children up through the church and them not turn away from the church? Because you see that happen a lot, especially in the send your kid to college world that we live in and they're so indoctrinated once they get there. But you know, we had the great fortune of seeing our kids grow up 
in the church mm -hmm. and loved coming to church mm -hmm. and still do. Mm -hmm. And people ask, how did you pull that off? And mm -hmm. um, uh, Lynn, how do you think we pulled that off? I don't know. One thing that my daughter came back and told us, I think she's around 19 or 20, and she had started stepping out, you know, going away to school. And uh, someone reflected on, wow, you're, so, you're normal. You're still a Christian. You're 19, and you're, and you're looking to get involved in a church in this community. She's, you know, a thousand miles away from home. And the one thing that she said to this gal that asked her her question, she said, the question was, how did you remain, how did you stay a Christian through all of that? And she said, well, you know, my mom and dad were the same yeah. at church, at home. Yeah. They weren't. They, whatever you saw at home mm -hmm. is who they were at church, and whoever you saw at church is who they were at home. And I thought I reflected on that. And I thought that was a great compliment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. I think that just being who we are at, uh, with the Lord, with our kids, and being consistent that yeah. way, and uh, guarding our time. You know, uh, yeah. when we first started the church, I'm sure you probably were very, very busy. Yeah. And John was in meetings all the time, you know. They used to have this thing called home visitation where the pastor would <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sunday morning and then he would get the visitor's card yeah. and then he yeah, would I did a lot of that. A lot of home oh, visitation. for new people? Yeah. Yes, oh, for okay. new people. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it wasn't something that was modeled in no, the Calvary as it. much. No. It was <clears throat> perhaps just something we thought that was what you did. Thing. It's yeah. a southern, southern kind of a thing. Southern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But you I know, didn't want John yeah. to be out every night. Right. Oh. And so I said, you know, I don't want your kids to grow up thinking dad's at a meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dad's at a meeting. So I would tr I would kind of guard the church, uh, the home a little bit. Just say, hey, John, you know, maybe maybe yeah. not that so much. Not yeah. so much in a weird controlling way. Yeah, but, but right. it is important. And I think our kids have said that same thing, <clears throat> oh, that my, right. our, ki our parents were the same at home as they were mm -hmm. at church. And our parents loved Jesus. And right. that's what they displayed at home. Yeah. Yes. And they people were not seeing anything different at right. church. Right. Yeah. It wasn't phony. It wasn't some yeah. churchy kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, and our kids, I've heard at yeah. least Nate and Shane say the same yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. We had, um, several years ago, we had Neil come speak at, a, mm -hmm. at something that we did at, yeah. at, uh, at church, and I happened to be walking out of the back of our sanctuary and overheard someone mm -hmm. ask Neil a question, oh. and they said, Hey, you're a PK, yeah. <laughs> and uh, right. you know like, you, and you're you're now a pastor yourself. Yeah. You know how did that essentially that same thing, and what you just said, your daughter said is is almost verbatim really? what Neil said. Mm -hmm. He I said did, yeah, he said awesome. my parents are the same at church as they oh, are at home. Great. They don't. It's not a show for them. They really love Jesus, mm -hmm. and I think you know the and and again, this is not a formula. No. We right. we know yeah. people who love Jesus, they've raised their kids right. well, and they have some backslidden kids. Absolutely. And so are prodigals. And uh, so it's not a formula to no, guarantee. No, it wasn't absolutely perfect however, at home all the time. Right? However, yes. if you're playing pastor, yeah. as opposed to just living for Jesus, um, that's going to reflect itself in a lot of things. Right. And kids are really in the kids. Yeah. yeah, I think, you know, we all have our you know, roller coaster ride raising our kids. Yeah. Yes. And um, I think one of the things Lynn and I learned through the whole thing of, of, you know, having these young kids grow into adulthood and start spreading their wings was that we really had to uh, fight for our kids. Right. The enemy came after them. Yeah. And we had the to pray did. for them. Sometimes just lay in bed at night and pray mm -hmm. for them and pray for their purity, pray for their protection. And uh, just ask the Lord. Uh, I remember, I'll never forget, we had this one experience where we were able to take our kids to Israel mm -hmm. as a family. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were like yeah. 10, Pre -teen. 13, 15. And we had this idea while we were in the Garden of Gethsemane to lay hands on them and just specifically pray for their spouses. Not our will be done. Hang on to those olive <laughs> trees and say, oh, God. <laughs> Your will be done because we, we would like to pick out the mate. Yes, right? yeah. absolutely. So fast yeah. forward about, what, 15 years or so. Recently, we're back in the Garden of Gethsemane, and our daughter's uh, in-laws were with us. They live in Michigan, wanted to come to Israel. Sure, yeah, you can go with us. So we're about to walk out of the garden, mm. and Len turns around, and there's Pete and Brenda. And Len goes, you know, 15 years ago, we prayed for you right mm. here. And Pete so. goes, what are you talking about? He goes, we laid hands on Jenny, and we prayed for mm -hmm. her future spouse, and now you guys are walking out of the garden That's with us. Cool. He just kind of teared up. Yeah. But, 
you know, I think there's a lot of parents out there who struggle with kids, especially in the culture that we live in with all the mm -hmm. gender confusion yeah. and all the stuff that's going down yeah. in schools. Mm -hmm. That I think I think the simplest answer is live your faith before your kids mm -hmm. in a real genuine way and fight for your kids. Yeah. Pray for them. And one of the things I kept saying, because I was raised in a Christian home, we weren't in ministry, but raised in a Christian home, and I kept thinking when Nate was a teenager, the same Holy Spirit that spoke to me yes. is the same Holy Spirit that speaks to him, mm -hmm. and that I have to trust, trust that the Lord is speaking mm -hmm. to him. And sometimes I knew the Lord was speaking to him, and he wasn't listening, Right. <laughs> but yeah, the true. Holy Spirit was speaking to him and drawing him to himself, and I have to trust that the Lord is doing that Amen. in each of them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I know that uh, I was at a breakfast one time with a group of guys, actually with Neil and his team down in Destin when he was pastoring there. And they wanted to ask me a bunch of questions because the church was just starting to grow down in Destin. One guy asked me, he goes, uh, Pastor John, tell us, what's been the hardest thing for you over the years pastoring this church? I said, well, the most difficult thing in this pastoral ministry has been me. I'm my, yeah. <laughs> I'm my, I'm my biggest problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I think that that's true. You know, like you you were sharing today, just how we're in this fight, and that we're we we have certain things we're delivered from when we first come yeah. to Christ, but there's that ongoing battle mm -hmm. of you, mm -hmm. and um, it's just something that I think we all have to conquer over and over mm -hmm. again. It's not like a one time thing, right? right? And now I'm well, now I'll never worry about that mm -hmm. again. Yeah. But we all go through it. So, so anything else that comes to you guys' mind about, you know, ministry together and Vero and all, over all these years raising four boys mm -hmm. and, awesome. and you know, you're at a different stage in ministry now. Yeah. You just became grandparents. Yay, the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah. People said it was, and I, I didn't know. understand it, but That's now right. I do. Yeah, you get it. And now you have the empty nest situation. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what's ministry like now that the kids are out and you're in this season? Any difference? Well, for me, I think I would while raising the children, I would always see that that was my purpose. That's mm -hmm. what God has called me yeah. to. Yeah. So now I really, it's the kids have all been married for three years, almost three years. And um, I think still I'm like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. What do you have for me? What is my purpose? And, you know, I, I think one of the things the Lord has been putting on my heart is just loving people mm -hmm. and reaching out mm -hmm. and ministering mm -hmm. to people, inviting women to lunch, mm -hmm. inviting women to come alongside and to be there and, you know, sit with them at church or whatever it might be, but just to show them that they are loved. They're, that's all people want yeah. is You're to right. know that they're loved. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I have time now to reach out that's and nice. I need to be doing that because it's great. easy yeah. to do nothing yeah right? it's easy. i mean not that i do nothing and, and we <laughs> are, argue about this but i have all day that i could be at home just doing yeah. my own thing sure. right and i need to make steps effort, effort yeah mm -hmm. to be so so what is your purpose now <laughs> making donuts <laughs> that's my new hobby that i purpose. love yeah. really you don't look like a gal that eats donuts <laughs> no, I do. make donuts <laughs> eat them too. Sample. Yeah, a sample. Well, right. Jim's not eating them. No, no, he's not. He's a one bite. It's oh. so boring. John, can't you? They don't eat donuts. No. Yeah. So any any yeah. thoughts for That's you, Jim, true. now that Ness is empty? I mean, you're, you're still doing the same thing yeah. you've been doing. Yeah, I think, you know, that... And that's, I think, um, even going back like to the original question about ch starting the church together, mm -hmm. um, you know, when, and I, I'm sure it was very similar for you, when, mm. when you first started, you had a responsibility right. to Spelled get to know out. this text and prepare it and communicate it with the people. And then whatever challenges came up in the lives of the people to help minister to them. And if the church was 10 people or 100 people right. or 500 people or whatever, you know, that, that responsibility still stays the same. Mm -hmm. And with, you know, the things that are going on as the, as the you know, life changes Seasons. with the family dynamic and everything, that, that's a constant. Mm -hmm. And, but for Christy, you know, we left Southern California. We moved across the country. We had four children. Our oldest was five, twin, identical twins that were three and an infant. <laughs> My goodness, yes. And and her life didn't change either, except she lost every bit of support and yeah. relationship Damn. and community yeah. that she had. That's hard. And so she's, I, 
I have purpose from day one. Mm-hmm. She's right. figuring out this thing. So then she goes for, you know, 18 years, yes. you know, of what that purpose is. My, my thing's still the same. Right, mm-hmm. right. And now she's 18 years in. And it's like, okay, well, now what do I do? And it's like, well, what do you mean what do I do? I'm doing the same thing I was doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, right. I got to get this text and yeah. I got to teach it this yeah. weekend. Right. And she's developing. Yeah. So I, I think for, for wives of pastors, I think that there's an additional mm-hmm. challenge mm-hmm. that we don't have that yeah. they're, you know, they're, um, experiencing as as things mm-hmm. change, and so that's, that's been a, a something. I think she's done really well, but yeah. um, donuts. donuts <laughs> yeah. Well, I know for us, you know, kids left, and uh, Lynn kind of got we, we she kind of got involved in a job outside the church. Yeah. Did real estate for a while, mm-hmm. and still, it, doing, it, it, still yeah, doing it, and yeah. it brought us together in that a little bit. She does all the work. I just plant some signs in the yard. I know. But <laughs> what's interesting is it would get us into people's lives yeah, that we would never, yeah. ever have a door yeah. into. Right. And many of them have come to the church. Right. Many of them plugged yeah. in. And um, That's been a great thing know, to do. Lynn would say something like, you know, this is a huge investment. You're stepping into this. Yeah. And my, right. my husband's a pastor. Yeah. Could we pray for you? Mm-hmm. And, so and people all, almost well. never would say no. Yeah. And so that that was that's, that's been, been an interesting thing. thing. And yeah. uh, now I'm in transition. I'm probably mm-hmm. speaking every other Sunday instead of every Sunday. So that's changed my 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 world. So we we started a small group in our home that we haven't had in a long that's long right. time, mm-hmm. and we're meeting people. We're we're just in a different season right, right now that. Um, We've ever in, been before. Well, and we have grandchildren. Yeah, mm-hmm. we have lots of them. Which is a lot of fun. And like, Christy, you're just starting with that. We're going to be having 13 mm-hmm. by the time this year ends. And nine of those actually live here. Yeah. And two of those are in Fallon, Nevada. But I want to be intentional about that. Right. Yeah. That's a get-to. That's the yeah. reward of raising right. those kids. Mm-hmm. And I want to yeah. have that kind of relationship right. with my grandkids now mm-hmm. where, you know, maybe they'll come talk to me. I was walking along the road <laughs> with my little seven-year-old granddaughter about three weeks ago. And uh, we were walking to the park. And she said, Lolly, I'll come see you when I'm 17. I'll still talk to you. Oh, <laughs> and then she said, and I wasn't provoking that. She just... Uh, kind of offered it. And then she said, as a matter of fact, Lolly, I'll come see you when I have my own kids. Mm. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? This is a season of sweetness and yeah. a season of kind of getting to the reward of having kids. Mm-hmm. And so I want to be intentional about grandparenting and mm-hmm. also probably put myself in places where, like you're talking about, Chrissy, just listen and be available because mm-hmm. um, young moms are listen- watching our lives and they're mm-hmm. seeing us with our kids that are now adults and they're fretting and worrying. I hope my kids turn out and yeah. right. we get to say, well, you know, we did. We fought for mm-hmm. our kids. We yeah. prayed for our kids. So we didn't do anything perfect, but we were just mm-hmm. available in there. And that's what I was saying to Jim just a week ago, I think, about I wish I would have known then what I know yes. now because a lot of my time was spent worrying. Exactly. And if I would have known what the turnout was going to be, I would have spent a lot less time worrying. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Uh, Cameron was in church this morning. She goes, tell me anything else you've said that I can learn. Just tell me right now. Tell me three or four things right now. I go, I will. (laughs) You know, just enjoy them. That's Mm -hmm. what I said. Just enjoy them. And I do remember people telling me that when they were young, but it's hard to. It's hard when you're you're in the midst of it. But God is faithful. He is. And he was faithful. And John Mm -hmm. and I were never perfect. We Mm -hmm. just kind of like yours. And one day at a time, we get up and pray and talk to the Lord and kind of ask him to help us give us wisdom and discernment Mm -hmm. beyond our years to raise these kids Mm -hmm. but now I but I do look back on our lives together as being involved in ministry we've done it for a long time wasn't it a get to yeah Yeah. Um, I think about I don't have a lot of regrets of the time that I spent Mm -hmm. that we did uh, yeah. building the church and being involved in the lives of others. Now we get to hear the stories. I came to church at, you know, yeah. here 25 yeah. years yeah. ago, yeah. and you baptized my kids, you dedicated my kids. And I think, wow, that's a get-to. You know, yeah. John and I have been at this church for 38-plus years, and awesome. it's been a great ride mm-hmm. and a great journey. Well, you, you shared something in your message this morning that I totally identified with. I, I wasn't churched. I didn't grow up in the church. Yeah. You know, I was in a pretty gnarly surf culture, so to speak, and um, I got saved and uh, started going to church, and they had opened the Bible. They had one of these 
good news for modern right. men, Page old New Testament, they would say, <laughs> so they're about 20 or 30 of us, kind of all our friends are getting saved. Turn to page 35, yeah. you know. <laughs> we didn't know where to find John or Luke. Yeah. Didn't know who they were yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, just through life transformation, right. uh, began to just, Lord, what do you want to do yeah. with me? You right. know, and next thing I know, I'm in a Bible college right. and then seminary and come back to my hometown, which I really wasn't expecting to come home to. And God so maneuvered me to start the church. And it was like, Gosh, really not what I was wanting to do. Yeah. But, but you get to. But I got to do it, yeah. and it's been an amazing thing. Isn't it been great? I mean, yeah. what a privilege. And just, what it, a privilege. And it's opened up doors. Yes. I mean, mm-hmm. right. I think, go ahead. No, you go ahead. <clears throat> well, I, was, I was thinking, I, I mean, I'm not sure this is a church planting podcast, but we're church planters, <laughs> so we're going to talk about go. that. But, Absolutely. And and then the same thing, you know, I'm not sure it's a parenting part, but right. we're parents, you know, and grandparents. And right. um, But I, one of the things I think, you know, there's a, with guys that are thinking about going out and planting, um, there, you know, there's, there's so much now literature right. on mm-hmm. it. There's so much, you know, you could, you could listen to, plans. you know, podcasts yes. and plans and, and how you, Programs. you know, focus and everything else. And it's not that those things are bad. I no, mean, right. probably the more you know about a community, the better off you're going to be right. ministering in it. But I, I think that um, what I'm hearing from you guys and certainly for us is that it was just like we were walking with the Lord mm-hmm. and we're sensing that God's calling us to to share the same things that were shared with us mm-hmm. yeah. with others and let God do the same work in others that God is doing in us. And that parenting was the, like the same way we're, yes. we're, you know, we've had these kids. We want to see God do the same thing in their lives that he's doing in our lives. And we're it. So it's, it's, it's this idea of just, we're loving Jesus and we're walking with Jesus and we're doing what Jesus wants us to do. And that, Daily, one day right. And I think that day. guards us from becoming professional pastors. Yeah. Right. And, you know, we have a, we've created an organization and we're now the, we're, you know, the captain of the ship or whatever. It's more that's just like, yep. so now you guys are at this place. I know you've been praying for quite some time about this transition period mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. changing the role. And even, even like you, you were the, the look on your face when you're saying, you know, I, it's different for me, but now we've started this home fellowship in our house again. Yeah. Like you're super mm-hmm. excited just about yeah. just basics. loving yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And yeah. This yeah. is what we think God's doing here. And mm-hmm. Yeah. My wife wanted to be a realtor. So. Now I get to pray for all these people. It's like, well, yeah. you're just a Christian. That's yeah. right. Do Doing what life. God's asked you to do. So yeah. I think anybody yeah. watching, listening, whatever that has a sense, it's just, yeah, just be a Christian. Just right. love Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And He'll if that, show you. right. And if that, if church planting is part of that, it's going to look this way. If, if being a, you know, a technician is part of it, it's going to look this way. That's but right. it's just love Jesus and do what's in front of you. Parent that way. Right. Pastor that way, yeah. finish that follow way. Jesus, finish yes. that way. That's and a great. That way. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's that's probably the most <laughs> simple advice you could give anybody. You know, people want this strategy. This, mm-hmm. you know, right. show me how you did it, and you're like, you know, I couldn't tell you how I did it. I just God did it. I just mm-hmm. followed the Lord, Best and He did. opened doors. Yeah. And and one of the things I, I think has always been very significant in my life, as I tried to follow the Lord. He would bring individuals my mm-hmm. way that were so much smarter than I, <laughs> so much more accomplished than I. I mean, guys in the church, yeah. like, you know, builders, electric, all these kind of guys. Yes. And they would go, well, here's them. what you need to do. Go, yeah, that's what we need to do. <laughs> and, and then pastors, yeah. you know, that like Ray Bentley, who introduced me to Calvary Chapel. You know, I'll never forget one time he said, John, have you ever done an altar call? And I go, well, everybody in our church is kind of saved. We don't need to do them. You know, and he <laughs> challenged me on that and kind of instructed me and started doing it. I was like, wow, this is crazy. So people and the simplicity of just following Jesus yeah. and the doors that he opens along the way. Yeah. So a- anything you guys want to share as we kind of wrap this up about ministry in general, just life together as Jim and Christy Gallagher, <laughs> and Vero good. Beach. How, first of all, how did, how, why Vero Beach? How did you end up in Vero Beach? Well, um, <clears throat> it's one of those things like, okay, wow, you just opened a can. So, um, wow. you know, I, I had... Um, I would worked as an intern at Calvary Costa Mesa for a year right. and was introduced to pastoral ministry. And it was it was the year that we first got married. And it was a very difficult year for us. Mm-hmm. And so after a year of that, I resigned 
from that position, <clears throat> and I got hired as a Bible teacher. In the, in the college? At, or the, at, the, at the high school. At the or high junior high. school. Middle school first yeah. and then high school. Okay. I did that for you eight, guys were married, for eight really. years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, in that in that season, I felt like I just like stepped into what I was created for. It was just such a sweet season. So a few years of, of teaching the Bible in the Bible class, and then I started having this sense of, okay, That's but strange. I think the Lord's called me to pastoral ministry. Mm. So we began to pray, and, and for several years, um, thinking this is my last year, the Lord's going to open a door. This is my last year. It was year, hard for him to door. even sign that <clears throat> next year contract. Or, or, yeah, oh. it, was, it was more like a, a, an intent. Yeah, yes. intent. You know, yeah. Do you intend to come back? Do you intend <laughs> like, to I don't know right? what the Lord's doing. And so I wouldn't wow. sign it till the last. They come um, to me tell and, him what our, our favorite verse is. Oh, that. The, in Second Chronicles. Yeah, well, the passage that says, uh, uh, we don't know what we're doing, but our eyes are on you. I love that. That's, great. that's, just, that's our life. Yeah. So anyway, so one morning I get a phone call from John Randall. He, mm-hmm. had, he had moved just a few months earlier to Brandon, Florida. Yeah, I remember when John came there. Yeah, yeah. and he said, hey, he said, there's, some, there's a group of people meeting in Vero Beach, Florida. There's somebody that drives down from Merritt Island that's pastoring them. And uh, he's sensing that he's done. And they're looking for somebody to come pastor them. And uh, he said, your name came to my mind. He said, here's a number. Gee. So I had kind of made this sort of thing with the Lord before that if I had if I had an opportunity to do ministry, the answer was yes, unless the Lord told me no. Mm-hmm. Like I don't have to, like if somebody says, yeah. hey, can you come teach? I don't need to go home and fast and pray for a week. Right. The Lord's called me to do that. If God doesn't want me to, he'll tell me. So it was like, so well, great. I've got an opportunity. I have to, I have to, I, I've moved my whole Christian life this way. I'm going to have to step. So I made the phone call. We flew out. I was five months pregnant yeah. when we, I, with uh, our yeah. fourth son. We met in a in Thanks, a yeah. hotel, best, like a best like Western, a best Western little, little. They, they were already group. meeting. They there were already meeting. Group. Okay. And uh, and I I taught and it was like if there was if there was ever a a communication line from heaven that was severed, that was it. Like mm-hmm. I did not sense anything from the Lord. <laughs> when oh. I got off so, the plane, I just thought, what yeah. are we doing here? Yeah, right. Let's I, go I, home. Yeah. Oh. So <laughs> It's human. So I came back. <laughs> and it was February. Yeah. So, and, oh, and it so was I, still I, not so nice. Yeah. What are we doing? So <laughs> I came back in May um, and, uh, and they were meeting. There were about 12 people. Um, and, uh, and I just sensed while I was teaching, I just sensed the Lord just said, move here. That's and so scary. I flew home and told Christy, and Christy was like, if you think it's the Lord, I think it's the Lord. Let's go for it. She, oh, that's awesome. she never wanted to stand in the way of what we thought God was doing. We've yeah. been praying. That's awesome. And we put and our house up for sale, and of course it sold, sold the day. first day. Exactly. Yeah. 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 We're like, okay, I guess yeah. this is the Lord. And so we, we made our way out and just uh, just began. And it was a, it was a, it was a slow mm-hmm. journey. I think I would illustrate it this way. Like the first two years, I had my head down, and I was just pushing. Yes. And then after two years, I looked up to see where we'd gone, and we hadn't gone anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and we had, I think our, our first meeting, there were 25 people. Uh-huh. Our second meeting, there were 15. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And two years later, we were about 20. Mm-hmm. And then, so then it was like this wow. overwhelming sense of like introspection. Sure, and, yeah. And what's wrong with me and yeah. all the stuff that you described, you know, mm-hmm. earlier about I'm the problem. And that went on for two and a half years. And the Lord just really kind of reworked who I was. And then just slowly, just the church, after four and a half years, the church just started growing. God just started doing something. Sort of got rooted and grounded and started moving forward. And it hasn't been like revival, like hundreds of people at a time. It's just been steady Steady. for the past 20 years or Mm -hmm. 18 years. And, uh, and, you know, when you just stand back and like you said, you know, like I, you look back and go, wow, God, I can't believe what you've done. What you've done. And we're still the same yeah. people that, yeah. you know, we just, okay, if this is what you want yeah. us to do. And honestly, after 23 years, I still think, oh, I can't wait to see what the Lord's going right. to do. Yeah. It's not sure. like exactly. we're tired and ready to be done. Right. It's no, like it's God's so going to do some more. Yeah. Yes. This is exciting. Yeah. Let's just yeah. keep following yeah. him That's and right. see what he That's does. That's exactly right. I still look forward to coming yeah. to church. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. not like... Yeah. It's a routine. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's a personal decision. Yeah. 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 And so, a great thing. So one of the final questions I was yeah. going to ask you, I think you already answered it, was do you have a a life verse or a passage mm-hmm. and, and so it's what was it again? It, tr- it truly it. is. It's it's there's a, a situation where Judah is under threat. Right. And uh, they they and there and there's really no hope for them. 
And so the king gets the people together and he makes this really, it's, it's a public address. Mm. And in this public address, he prays and he says, <laughs> Lord, you know, this enemy is coming against us. There's, there's no chance for us. And he says, we don't know what to do, mm-hmm. but our eyes are on you. What and I think, I I think like that. that's really just how mm-hmm. we've managed everything. Um, I think you know, this year <laughs> yeah. has been like yeah, the ultimate yeah. highlight. Yeah, so like every thing every is changing. Every time we yeah. turn around and we don't know, you know, should I do this? Is this a good right. idea? Is this a bad idea? What are the repercussions going right. to be? Are we, you Go know, forward. if we push the envelope a little bit on maybe, hey, we're, you know, there's, there's some restrictions, but they're kind of vague. We're going right. to push the envelope. Are we actually isolating ourselves from the very people we're mm-hmm. trying to reach? Right. You know, or are we like, we don't know what we're doing. Right. Everything's a question. So, Lord, we're just going to pray. And then we're going to do, do what we think you're telling us to do. Yeah. And we're not going to blame it on you until we see the fruit of it. Right. I love it. Because <laughs> then it's really like, like, how did you, well, the Lord told us to do it. Yeah, like, right. I'm not going to blame you on it if I do it wrong, because maybe I wasn't listening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Isn't that great? great? That's so yeah. fresh. That's yeah. just the way to do it. And that's why right. it's going to be different here in right. Vero right. yeah. Beach as it is here. Right. And we, yeah. we see our friends in California dealing right. with it differently yes. than Absolutely. we do here in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to make sure that we're hearing yeah. from hearing the Lord from here. And just rest in it, walk in it. But I know when you plant a church, you have a, time frame and you know you you try all kinds of things i mean mm-hmm. i was probably six or eight years into the church here mm-hmm. when i thought what am i doing in gulf breeze i mean it's, <laughs> this it's this big yeah. pensacola is like yeah huge and i'm yeah. over so i started another church really? in pensacola yeah, and a, um, at a ymca i met, met over there on sunday evenings mm-hmm. i drugged the band over there and we had a lot of people coming and so i had about 50 60 people and um and I was just worn out. I was doing two churches, mm-hmm. Wednesday nights, just all this stuff. So I got, long story short, I said, we'll take the summer off and maybe find a pastor. Yeah. Well, they that's found cool. a pastor, one of my associates. <laughs> 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 so that's how Pensacola Calvary got started. <laughs> but it was a good thing. Yeah. But but when that group left, yeah. it, it was, you know, about 60, 70 people, yeah. which was a chunk of people sure. at that time in my life. Right. And um, I remember being very frustrated and saying, well, Lord. You know, if this is what you have for me, yeah. you know, this small little group of people in my hometown, uh, I'm, I, I don't know, you know. Yeah. I'm, and I remember distinctly pulling off the road, having this conversation with the Lord. I was all by myself in the car, and it's like the Lord said, so if I have this for you, you don't want to do it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can find and, and, and I said, yeah. Well, Lord, yeah, if you want me to do it, I'll, and it was like a breaking point for me. Lord, if this is really what you have for me, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. And it was like after that, I was free. Free. That's the key. I was yeah. free. And you're free. Yeah. You're free. Right. It was and an amazing thing. I had thing. a really right. similar situation where I was complaining to the Lord that we'd been here for a couple right. of years and it hadn't grown. And um, I remember the Lord saying, if this is it, is this enough? Right. I'm like. Yes, Lord, if this is what you have for me, this is enough. That's all I want is what you have for me, and I'll be content with this. And it is a breakthrough moment because it it relinquishes all of our trying to do something Mm -hmm. to make it happen Uh, and trusting him with what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, Do you remember the the, because you were willing? And that was another thing because we had a friend – in Huntington Beach, we grew up in Huntington Beach, and, and a Calvary in Huntington was looking for a pastor, and our friend was moving into that position. We probably had been here only two years. It was right around right. the same same time, and I and I, you know in my mind, like if we only stayed there, maybe <laughs> Jim would be the one pastoring. Jim would be the Huntington place. Yeah, and um, I remember the Lord say, or saying, I was saying to the Lord, "Why did you move us here?" And He said, "Because you were willing." Mm. Are you still willing to wow. be here? That's I'm great. like, yeah. yes, That's a great I'm question. still, I'm yes, still willing. Lord. I'm yeah. still where I want. I, I know the Lord wants us, right. yeah. and I'm right. happy to be here. Absolutely. Right. So, Lynn, do you have a life verse? Oh, in Him we live and move and have our being. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. my life verse. Yeah, that's yeah. great. And I had um, a few years ago. We had three sons get married within six months of each other. Right. Every two months. <laughs> And kind of at the beginning of that year, they're all engaged, knowing that they're going to get married, thinking, I want to be 
the best I can be. I want to be the best mom. I want to be the best wife. I want to be the best Bible teacher, you know, mm-hmm. just kind of, kind of coming to this place of like praying and asking the Lord to work in me and then coming to the end and going, I just want to be perfect. Yes. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. And she the, is, by the way. And, yes. and the Lord John, speaking. John, you want to say, speak into that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Lord's saying, if you were perfect, you wouldn't need me. That's right. And I need you needing me. And that verse in Hebrews 4.16 came to mind. It mm. says, um, come to the throne of grace and receive mercy. help in time. Yeah, mercy, mercy. to time. help in time of need. And that's where the Lord wants us, continually yeah. coming to him because we need him. It's so true. Daily. Yeah. Daily. Yeah. Daily. Yeah. <laughs> Give us this day our daily bread. That's right. You, you, know, you, you shared in your message today about that ongoing transformation. Yeah. You said, you know, well, I'm shy. I, I can't do that. Well, can't the Lord give you victory over yeah. that? Can't I the Lord that. give you victory yeah. over that? And, and, and he can, you know, over so many things yeah. in our life that, that we, when we're pursuing him. And, you know, my... my um, Life first has always been Second yes. Corinthians five seventeen. If mm-hmm. anyone be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Yeah. And I was listening to the radio recently, and it was Chuck Smith, one of Chuck's old messages. And someone came to him and said, "Well, I'm just that way. That's the way I was born." And Chuck made oh, this like profound this. statement. He goes, "But you weren't born again that mm-hmm. way." <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> I thought, I thought, what a great thank statement. You, yeah. And thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to be this way forever. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys. So okay. great. If I could throw sure. one last thought out, because we did talk about parenting, and, and yes. you uh, mentioned the idea of you know kids that grow up in believing homes, but then such a wave of yeah. influence mm-hmm. in our in our world that that really undermines the value systems yeah. of, of the Bible and and kids, you know, getting or young people getting swayed up in that, partly because they have love relationships with people. They right. develop relationships with people, not in, not even necessarily intimate ones, just but friendships. just friendships. And they see like, well, you have this value system that we've learned is not the right value system, but I value you. And so they're passing yeah. on. Hmm. There's a there's an interesting book. Um, I can't. The author's last name is really hard to pronounce, so I didn't memorize it. But the book is called After Doubt, mm-hmm. and it deals with the this idea of of deconstructionism, mm-hmm. and it deals with the idea of young people, well, people in general. But the idea of you, you have a value system constructed in you, then it gets deconstructed, right? And we need to learn how to reconstruct it. And one of the things that I think is important in parenting is that is having an environment as you're raising, you know, Christian kids um, is having an environment that allows some deconstruction to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it allows the, the kids to be able to question. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't, I, not only am I seeing you live it out, but, but I'm also right. like, I've got, make it your own. Yeah. And, you know, um, maybe to illustrate, Years and years ago, I was uh, in Southern California. I'm not sure if we um, had kids yet. And I was listening to K-Wave, Calvary mm-hmm. Costa Mesa's program, or radio station. James Dobson was on. Mm-hmm. He's having a conversation about dating. Yeah. And, the, and the individual said, well, I want my, my kids to date while they're living in our house so that they can learn how to do it well, rather than sending them off to mm-hmm. college right. and they date without any coaching. And it was just an interesting thing. And it kind of went in the back of my brain. And I think in the same way, like with this idea of deconstruction, where children are going off to, or young people are going off to university, everything about their value systems being deconstructed. Challenged. Are we allowing a little bit of that to happen yeah. in the home? Yeah. So they've already faced that and they've already been able to wrestle through some of that. Mm-hmm. So that book, After Doubt, Sounds if, good. if there's yeah. parents struggling yeah. with that, that, yeah. that can be helpful. I know when your kids get to a certain age, uh, you, you know, you, you no longer kind of are the king and can tell them everything. Yeah, you don't know mm-hmm. anything at yeah. that point. Yeah, that you, point. you just become an influencer. <laughs> exactly. right. And I remember I used to, my kids were kind of into basketball, and so I would have the goal, and two boys we would shoot, and Jenny would come out sometimes, or I'd drive them somewhere. And my thing was to be asking questions, hypothetical yeah. situations I would create. So you're in the car with this guy and, exactly. you know, with Jenny or, or, hey, you know, someone pulls out a marijuana. Yeah. What do you, what do you do? Right. Oh, dad, no one of my friends, oh, I didn't say they were, but if but they if did, they, or yeah. if you were in this situation right. and I kept trying to present them with, and just say, 
well, just give me your answer. I'm not even going to comment on it. I just want to hear what yeah. you would do. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think getting, like you're saying, getting an environment where your kids yeah. can at least yeah. – deal with situations right. that they're going to deal with anyway regardless and right? it's that deuteronomy 6 you know hear o israel the lord our god is one love god with all your heart soul mind and strength uh, you know you're supposed to embrace these things yourself and then teach them to your children mm-hmm. when you rise up and lie down walk along the way mm-hmm. write them on the door post it's that idea of not just i have devotions with my kids mm-hmm. and this it's like a classroom and they learned yeah. a story right but we learn the Bible through life together. Right. And so the kids in the baseball game and they yeah. the struggle and what does the Bible say about dealing with this? Or, and it's that kind of a thing where you're yeah. describing that perfectly. And, yeah, and we would always, whenever our kids got old enough, we would try to take them to environments like a conference where the other kids were, or a missions trip or something where they could see hey, this isn't just mom and dad's yes. thing. Look at all these other people, yeah, like, right. like the Haiti. Take them wherever we could where they right. could see real Christianity being walked out and lived out so they'd go, oh, this isn't just mom and dad's gig. This yeah. is everybody. Yeah. A lot of people are into yeah. this. Yeah. Right. It made a huge yeah. difference. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. That's great. So Jim and Christy Gallagher, thanks for being here in yeah. Gulf yeah. Breeze. Our, I know you pleasure. made a detour to Alabama and that, that's awesome <laughs> pursuit but, of a uh, <laughs> yeah. so thank you we enjoyed it yes. I hope our paths cross again soon. Awesome. thank you thanks <laughs>